saying, uh, let me just load this slide again. Okay, so all these models are trained using a data from uh, these data are like past examples, like uh, data of images and the pose and respective levels along with them. So that's why it's called supervised learning because we are not just training the model from just images, but the images and al along with it, the associated labels. So that's called, uh, that's why it's called supervised learning. So let's, uh, and uh, one thing about all these deep learning models and supervised uh, learning model is that they are built using a framework like TensorFlow. So let's uh, let's talk about challenges in a supervised learning scenario. So like I said, the key point here in uh, supervised learning is that they are trained using label data set. And that is one of the biggest challenges. It's a, it's a really hard to, you know, uh, come with a, uh, like label data set for every kind of problem, every problem that you want to solve using machine learning or deep learning. And uh, sometimes it's also like uh, hard to frame a problem in context of features and their levels. And one of the example of such a problem is a decision making. So while, uh, you know, training a model that uh, that is, you know, that is able to make a decision in uh, in future time it's sometimes very hard to frame that kind of problem in terms of uh, features and their levels so to address these challenges uh, we can use reinforcement learning so to understand what a reinforcement learning is let me share a slide which i have taken from a coursera course and uh, i think this uh, slide will uh, you know beautifully explain what this reinforcement learning is in essence so we all know about this uh, famous uh, phrase called uh, it's a uh, give a man a fish and he will eat for a day teach a man to fish and he will eat for a lifetime and we can you know address this phrase in terms of uh, traditional programming uh, this supervised learning approach and reinforcement learning as well so to address that give a man a fish and he will eat for a day we can re relate to that using good old fashioned ai that is like a programming with expert system with all rule based system and things like that we will explicitly you know tell the instruction to the AI as in what to do and what not to do. And teaching a man to fish and he'll eat for a day, that means like training your deep learning model with a, in a supervised learning scenario. And we can also tweak this phrase in terms of reinforcement learning. And to do that, we can say like something like, give a man a test for fish and he'll figure out how to get fish even if the details change. So what I mean by this in reinforcement learning is that to give a man a test for fish, that's basically we train a agent, a model in reinforcement learning scenario by associating certain reward. And uh, to say like, to give a man a test for fees, we can say something like giving a, a agent a reward whenever, you know, the agent makes a good decision in a, in a, in a, point, of, in, in a point in time, you know. So to give a man a test for fees means like training a model in a certain setting where you can just tell the agent what, whether the agent has done some, something good or not. But nothing more than that. We will not tease the agent what is a good uh, approach and uh, you know what is a, what, what it should be doing in the future. We'll just give them a hint, like if it's a, if the past action the agent has taken is good or not. And with that, with associating that uh, hint with certain reward and penalty, we can ultimately teach an agent. So to elaborate more and explain in a detail this concept of reinforcement learning and this concept of a, a reward and, you know, so to speak, a give a man a test for fish, uh, what I have done here is that I have framed this problem of reinforcement learning and training a model a agent using reinforcement learning in a scenario of a fictional game called Dog in a Park. So uh, what I'm trying to do here is that I'm trying to explain the various concepts used in reinforcement learning and how we can train such algorithms such agent in reinforcement learning uh, using the example of a fictional game called Dog in a Park. And uh, so let's begin with that. Uh, so the, here is the brief overview of the game. And the game is pretty straightforward and very simple. So our player, a dog here, is, a, is in a section of a park. And the goal of our dog, our player, is to reach this end position with uh, end position of the section of the park. And 
there are some challenges while doing so uh, the dog can move uh, right left up and down to you know and travel around this area of the park and ultimately reach this uh, end goal but to to create a challenge we have certain robots some robots placed uh, in a different person of this section of this park and whenever the dog oversteps the person where the robot is placed the game ends with a illegal move and the response of like okay the the the, the robot has captured the dog and things like that so so what what the dog the player needs to do is is avoid this uh, this all this person where robots are placed and raise this and uh, and person of the section of the spark uh, as soon as possible and to make matter more interesting we have also placed some bones uh, all over this section of the park and whenever the dog encounter the position uh, of the bone he gets extra reward meaning uh, what we are trying to say is that the dog is you know uh, the ultimate goal of our dog is to reach this end person as soon as possible while avoiding all these obstacles of robots that are placed a different uh, section of uh, different person in this park and while doing so the dog can collect as much bone as possible and that will give this dog uh, extra reward so uh, that's the brief overview and the rule of the game and uh, the dog cannot go beyond the boundary of the park as well so whenever the dog is in this initial position and if the dog moves left of this position that that will be another illegal move and similarly if the dog reaches this end position and tries to go to right of this end position that will be another illegal move as well because it's it, it will be out of the boundary of this uh, park so that's the overall uh, rule and the rule of the game so let's break it down all these different aspects of the game in terms of uh, reinforcement learning so first thing first what is an agent in reinforcement learning so to to take this example of this uh, dog in a park game we can say that our agent is controlling the player of this game that is the dog and when we talk about the deep reinforcement learning what we are trying to do is that we are placing a kind of a decision making criteria and ability to make decision uh, by this agent using a deep neural network and so to speak we can say like this deep learning model will act like a brain to this agent and this agent will ultimately control the movement of this dog in this section of the spark and that's that's our agent and uh, what he, uh, so in reinforcement learning we have another concept of environment so to give you an example of this environment context of this game what we can say is that uh, the environment is everything that is in this game so the placement of these bones the placement of the robots in a different part of uh, this park the placement of our player the end goal they are all part of the environment and we have another concept in reinforcement learning that is called state step action and observation so let me break it down all of this concept in terms of this game so what we can do is that our agent our player can only take one action in one step of the time so in every step in every in in one step time our player can only take one action and whenever the player takes that one action the state of the game changes from initial position from initial state to the next state so in this example in this slide you can see that in initial position our dog is in this in this first uh, this first position of this bar and whenever the dog moves right of this person the state of the game changes from this state to this one so what i mean by that is that in every time step the dog the agent can only take one action and while taking one action the state of the game changes and in this context the state of the game equals to the observation of the game but that is not true in every scenario whenever the environment is much complex and all the details of the environment cannot be comprehended comprehended by an agent and only certain part of the environment can be observed uh, by the by the agent then that, then in that case the state and the observation will be different but in this case the state and observation is the same
And one thing about this game is that this game is an episodic task, meaning that whenever the gear, whenever the dog reaches this end goal, the game restarts, and the uh, dog is again in this first position of the spar. So. Uh, scenario like that task like that whenever certain goal is reached and the game restarts or the you know the task restarts that's an episodic task and another task is continuous continuous task and that that could be like a walking of a robot and things like that that has no end to it so whenever a task that ends and repeats itself that will be an episodic task like in this case uh, this game now, we said that in reinforcement learning, uh, the agent learns from reward. So how do we actually uh, plan that or design that? So in this case, whenever the dog takes uh, any action, we will associate certain reward in its action. For example, here, whenever the dog move right uh, from its initial position, we will give certain negative reward that is of negative number that is minus 0 0.3 why we are doing that is that why why we're doing that is uh, because we want our dog to move as fast as possible to reach this end position so by giving in each step in its action a negative reward we are telling the dog the agent that uh, it should not spend too much time in this environment and try to reach this end goal as uh, fast as possible and similarly whenever the dog takes another action right in the, like in this case moving up uh, the row uh, then uh, and whenever the dog you know oversteps this portion of the bone then it will give it will uh, receive a positive reward of 1.0 in the uh, floating number and uh, that is that is because whenever we are we are trying to tell the dog that whenever the dog oversteps the position of the bone, it collects the bone and it should repeat this process over and over to you know collect more reward over time. So by that, what we are by that this uh, negative reward and positive reward, what, you, what we are trying to tell the dog is that it should uh, you know avoid making certain action that will uh, give this dog you know negative reward and whenever that action leads to a positive reward it should repeat that kind of action over time and the goal the ultimate goal of our player and the agent here is to collect as much reward as, as a big reward as much possible over the time and uh, reach this end goal and uh, whenever the dog reaches this end goal it will uh, receive this uh, ultimate reward of 10 positive 10 number that means that that's the biggest reward that the dog will ever get. And uh, that is why it should try to take certain action that will lead to this positive reward as soon as possible. So by associating certain positive and negative reward in each action or each step, we are trying to tell the agent what to do and what not to do. And uh, while following this pattern, we can ultimately teach this agent a proper scenario, proper behavior, where the agent will learn to, you know, travel all this uh, different section of this park and reach this end uh, goal in time in as fast as possible by avoiding all this obstacle and collecting as much bone as possible so to break it down you know you know like uh, to you know to give you like high high level overview of what is happening here so our agent takes a certain observation from the environment, that is where the agent is located currently, where all the robots are placed, where all the bones are placed, and where is this end goal. End goal. And uh, the agent passed this uh, state, this observation to this deep neural network, and this deep neural network will in turn gives prediction what uh, next action the agent should take, so that by taking that action, it should it will collect uh, you know over in uh, it should collect uh, uh, cumulative reward, a big cumulative reward over the time. So. Uh, so ultimately, this deep neural network, what it's telling is that it's learning to create a policy. And a policy is simply a behavior that this uh, that drives this agent in the section of the park in this environment. So this deep neural network in this environment, in the scenario, what it's doing is that by observing where the agent is located currently and where all the obstacles and the uh, bones are placed, it's trying to come up with a better policy 
seed that will lead to a, a behavior that will, over the time, by the end of this episode, the agent will collect a, a big reward, as much big reward as possible. So the ultimate goal of this deep neural network and the agent is to come up with this uh, ultimate policy that will give the optimum you know, behavior for this agent. So that's the overview of our game and all these different concepts of agent, environment, reward, action, and step. So to implement that, let's talk about TF agents and how we can implement this using TF agents. Okay, so this is the high-level diagram of uh, you know training an agent using TF agent framework. So TF agent is a framework that is used uh, to train such agents, such deep reinforcement learning agents, and it's part of TensorFlow ecosystem. So if you are already familiar with TensorFlow. And it uses a lot of database mechanism, data set uh, mechanism, and all of this uh, low-level stuff that uh, TensorFlow uses. And using that, it gives a functionality uh, to train an agent in this deep reinforcement learning setting. And these are all these different uh, you know, components of TF agent. And all these components are used to train this deep reinforcement learning agent. We'll go through all these components uh, one by one. And by the end of this session, hopefully you will understand how all they are connected and how they are used to train a deep learning agent, deep reinforcement learning agent. So let's first talk about environment. Let's create this environment in TF agent. That, uh, that is what you know, like we are trying to do. So uh, first create this environment where the agent will interact. And uh, after that, we'll go through each of this component. So let's first talk about environment. And when we talk about environment, we have to create a game logic class. So this game logic class, like I said earlier, will consist of all the game logic, like what movement is allowed uh, by the dog to take in this game. So uh, for example, like I said earlier, the dog cannot you know, go beyond the boundary of the game or the dog cannot overstep the person of the robot and things like that. So all, the, all of that is in this uh, in this game logic class. And it's a, it's a simple Python class that will write, that will, that will have everything for this game logic. For example, uh, here what we are doing, what we are trying to do here is that we will ultimately create two classes: one for game logic class and one for TF as an environment that will use that game logic class to create this environment for TF as a uh, learning setting. So let's first uh, talk about this game logic class, which is a Python class that will have logic for our game. So in this class, we have four methods. That is, one is init, another reset, and another is spot last. Is a spot last, and the fourth one is move dog method. Uh, we'll talk about all of these methods uh, one by one. So let's first talk about this init method in game logic class. So like I said, it's a simple Python class. Uh, and in this init class, what we'll do is we initialize the uh, environment, the state of our game. So here you can see the game is in a 2D, 2D kind of uh, shape. So we have like six position in each row, you know, and we have we have six, uh, six, uh, six uh, uh, rows. And in each row, we have six uh, position. But to make a uh, matter very simple in terms of programming and mapping all this state of the game, we can create this in a 1D array as well. So if you are already familiar with uh, NumPy and Python, that it should not be any problem. So what we are doing here is that we are first initializing the state of the game as a 1D array with 36 position. So like, like uh, as you can see here, we have a uh, we have 36 position from the starting position of this player to the end end position and what we are doing here is that we are we are you know mapping all this position taken by our player the robot the bone by different integer number so for example in all these indices we are we are trying to map that all in the, in all of these uh, indices we are placing a robot. So to address, to you know, like uh, give idea of where the robot is positioned, we can say something like with number two. 
So what we are doing here is that a robot in this case is denoted by number two, uh, bone in this case is denoted by number three, and all of this and all of the all and the value of two and three are placed in all of these indices in this game state. So basically, we are creating a one D array, uh, which uh, first it fills with zero, and uh, and the zero ultimately means empty position where our dog is allowed to move. And if the if the person is uh, it has the value of two, then it's the position of a robot. And if the person has the value of three, then that's the position for a bone. And if the person has the value of one, then it's the position of the current player. So by that we can simply create our our environment, our state of the game using one D array. And we have another uh, variable here as well called game init, which is basically a flag that will tell us, that will allow us uh, to, you know, know whether the episode of this game has ended or not. And that will happen whenever, if if the dog oversteps the robot or if the dog reaches the end position of this state. So whenever both of these conditions are, uh, you know, both of these con conditions happen, then the game will end and we'll turn this flag from false to true. After that, we create a reset method, which will basically, you know, reset the game environment to the initial position. After that, we'll create a custom method called is spot last that will return true if our player is uh, in this last position. And that in turn will help us to end this episode of the game. And the main function here, the important function here in this class is the move dog uh, function the method. And it will take two arguments. One is current person of our player and another is next person of our player. So uh, whenever like checking the next person of our player, we can say that if this next person is, whether it's out of boundary of, of the bar or it's illegal move, like you know, overstepping the robot, or if this next person equals to the last person of the Power. That that way we can return certain value like an integer or a string that will uh, that will further be handled by our environment. So whenever this next person uh, is uh, you know like illegal value, we can return certain message like this is illegal move. And whenever uh, this next person oversteps the robot, we can similarly, you know, return another response. Like say it's a it's a over it's a found robot with a found robot response. And similarly, uh, if if the you know if uh, if the player is uh, taking a valid uh, move, like going right from here or traveling and to another empty spot, then we can return with uh, certain messages like it's a valid move. So that way we can you know create this game logic class. So basically it's checking if this next person is a valid one or not. And if it's an invalid one, we can return with certain response. And if it's a valid one, we can similarly respond with another response. And by that, uh, by using this uh, game logic class, we can create our TF agent environment. So uh, again, let's look at this diagram. So here we can see that this TF is an environment, which is basically a Python class that will uh, that will take the object of this game logic class, and it will you know it will interact with this move dog method, and by observing the response from this move dog method, it will take certain action. So let's uh, let's uh, dive into it a little bit. So in TF as an environment class, we are you are we are subclassing it from the spy environment, which is given by TF as in whenever you install TF as in your system, you will have access to the spy environment. So basically you can use this to create your TF as an environment class. And similar to our game logic class, we can create an init method. Where in this uh, in this case in this init method in TF as an environment class, we are basically doing uh, two main step. One is creating a specification for our action and creating specification for our observation. So our dog, our player is uh, allowed to take different action. Uh, particularly in this case, our uh, dog is allowed to take four action. One is going right, another is left, another is top, and another is bottom. So to map all this action, we can map them between zero and three. So in this case, what we are doing is that we are creating the spec for our, the action of our dog from zero number to three, with, with each number being an integer number. And 
Similarly, we can also create a spec for our state of this game. And we know that our game is basically a 1D array of 36 position from minimum of zero value to maximum of three value. So zero value means it's an empty position, one means it's a player position, two means it's a bone, three means it's a, uh, two means it's a robot, three means it's a bone. And so using that, we can create our init method inside our TF as an environment class. So basically, init is responsible for creating the spec for our action and observation for our, you know, this environment. And like I said, we have to map our action from integer between zero and three. So how do we move this uh, this player, uh, you know, in this screen, in this uh, in this different person? Is that by mapping this value, we can say that if it's a, if the current action taken by our dog is zero, then we can say that we can subtract the current position of our dog uh, by minus one. Or similarly, if the action is one, a positive number one, then we can say that we can add the current position of our player by integer number one. And similarly, if, if it's the action is two, then you can subtract number six. And similarly, if the action is three, we can add number six, meaning it can go down and up. So that, that way we can map our action from zero to three to different position of this game environment. And uh, we can also, of course, this game is the object of our earlier game logic class. After that, we can create a reset method for our game environment that will basically call this reset method from our game logic class. And it will use this time step object and restart the whole game to this initial position again. And uh, we can create a custom method that will return the action spec and observation spec as well. After that, the important method here in this DF as an environment class by environment is that this underscore step method that will basically, you know, pass the next uh, position that is just calculated by observing the current action and uh, pass that this current uh, position of our dog and this next position to this move dog method from this earlier game logic class. And by observing the response from this move dog method, we can say something like if the response is illegal move, we can end the game with certain penalty. And similarly, if the response is found robot, we can end this game with certain penalty and then again and like that we can you know map all this different penalty or reward and transition of the game in this case for example as you can see if the response is a valid move we can give certain small penalty like minus 0 0.3 and transition the game from uh, current state to another one so i have avoided the code here because it's a long code and it will be very hard to read in this slide but i will show you by the end of this session and you can see how i am doing exactly this all this mapping but uh, it's uh, you know it's safe to say that all all this step method is doing is that it's taking the response from this move dog method and uh, by observing the response it is taking a necessary action like whether to give penalty or positive reward or to end the game or transition the game to the next state. Like that, we create our uh, TF as an environment. And to, to do that, we just call this TF as an environment class that we just created, pass our game logic class. And to validate that everything we have written in this TF as an environment, like every code is working, we can call this utils.validatePy environment and it will check the logic of just created a TF as an environment class and whether there is a logical error or not. And if everything passes, there will be not no message. But if there is certain error, it will show the error. After that, we create two environment. One is train environment, which will be used to train our agent. And eval environment, which will, after training the agent, we can evaluate our agent on this environment. And they are all you know created from the same uh, tf as environment cl class here this one after that uh, we just created our environment using tf as in pi environment class <coughs> sorry now let's create the agent so to create an agent first we have to create a deep neural network and in this case it's a tqn network that will that is a that has 
three uh, hidden layer. So earlier, like uh, if you're already familiar with deep learning and TensorFlow and Keras, you know, and like you, you might be familiar with Keras and all its layers, API and things like that. But in the TF agent, you don't have to use that. You can simply call this qnetwork.qnetwork. And uh, it comes with a TF agent once you install it on your system. And <coughs> sorry, sorry again. By just you know taking as an argument of this observation spec and action spec, and how many layers, how many hidden layer you want as a form of a list, as an in, in an argument, you can basically create your deep neural network. So it's easy like that. So in one line of code, you can basically cre create a deep neural network with three hidden layer, where first layer has thirty two neurons, second has sixty four, and third has one hundred twenty eight. And with this line of code, in this two line of code, you can create a deep Q network using TF agent. After that, we create our TF agent. And our, our agent here is a DQN agent that uses this deep Q network. And to do that, we can simply call this DQN agent or DQN or double DQN, uh, double DQN agent and pass our time step spec from our training environment, action spec from our time in our train environment, pass the earlier created Q network and pass the op optimizer. And in this case, optimizer can be a regular optimizer that you might have used in Keras and TensorFlow like ADAM optimizer or RMS optimizer. And if you're familiar with a lot of other uh, hyperparameter associated with deep Q, deep Q network and DQN agent, you can pass that here in the form of argument as well. After that, you basically create your, your, your agent by calling agent.initialize. And using this uh, this line of code, this simple line of code, you can basically create an agent, a DQN agent in TF agent environment. After that, let's create a replay buffer. So earlier, I, I showed you a diagram where all of these components are placed. So let me show you a half of this diagram here. So in this half of this diagram, what we have done so far is that we have created this environment using TF agent PI environment class. And now we need certain memory, uh, a memory that will hold all this past interaction. And with that memory, we can ultimately train our agent. So this replay buffer basically is a memory which has all this past interaction by our agent to this environment that we just created. And, and what I mean by past interaction is that steps taken by the agent in the past, you know, rewards collected in each step and different action taken in each step and so on. So all of these can be stored in a memory called replay memory or replay buffer. And using that replay buffer and replay, uh, replay memory, we can basically train our agent by showing like, okay, these are the past interactions that you have done. And that is, and this is how much reward you have collected by, you know, uh, taking all this past action. And by showing that and by training our agent using this past interaction, we can create a better agent in future. So basically this replay buffer, this replay memory will hold every past interaction of our agent in the past, in our just created environment. And using that, we train our agent. And to create this replay buffer, this replay memory, it's very straightforward. We just basically call this TF uniform replay buffer. And we pass our agent with this collect data spec uh, method and train environment with batch size. And we pass how much big, you know, we want our replay memory to be. In this case, I have passed the value of 1 million. You can reduce it. You can uh, increase it. It's, it's up to you. After that, we create something called observer. So in this diagram, as you can see here, uh, in this uh, in this replay buffer, it's passing this past interaction, this trajectory from this environment. This interaction by our agent is in the form of this trajectory, and this trajectory are being passed to this replay buffer, this memory using this function called observer. So observer is basically a function that will catch all this past interaction by our agent in this environment, and using this function will basically add this uh, trajectory, this interaction to this replay buffer. And 
this observer should not be something like it's not limited to something that will only you know add uh, something to our replay buffer memory uh, for instance uh, this observer can be a simple method that will print something or do something else so observer is basically it's something that will you know deals with this past interaction and it's up to this observer to what to do with this past interaction in this case this replay buffer observer will, will basically collect this past trajectory and store it in our replay buffer but it can be something more which i will show you in a second after that uh, so far what we have done is that we have created our environment, we have created our agent, and we have created a replay buffer memory and a function that will add this past interaction to this replay buffer memory. After that, let's create some certain training metrics. Now, uh, you might have uh, you know heard of different uh, loss function in deep learning and machine learning. Similarly, in uh, reinforcement learning, in deep reinforcement learning, we can create certain metrics to evaluate how much good the training is going on. You know how much well the agent is performing. In in this case, we have we can use two metrics. One is average return metric, and another is average episode length metric. So. Average return metric will basically, uh, you know, calculate in one episode in lot of iterations how much the average return is. So basically, we are aiming for a high value. So in average, if uh, if uh, in in lot of iterations, like in hundreds of iterations, in average, if our agent is you know able to collect as big a return as possible, that we can say that okay, the agent is doing good and it's going, it's learning something, it's uh, training well. And similarly, average episode length metric is, signifies that how many steps the agent is taking to complete an episode. So we don't want this value to be very small as well as we don't want this value to be very large. So some this value should be this value for this average episode length metric should be somewhere in between. So basically, what we are say, what we are trying to do here is that by observing return metric, if it's high enough, then we can say, okay, the agent has managed to call it high reward. And similarly, if the agent episode length metric is somewhere in between, then we can say, okay, this this agent is good. The training is going on in a good way. So these are the two metrics that we are going to use today. After that, let's create the driver that will ultimately, you know, use our agent uh, policy to interact with the environment. So as you can see here in this diagram, uh, we have created our agent and our agent has a policy that uh, signifies the behavior of our agent that whether it should go right or left or top or bottom. So this is uh, all mapped in a policy. So the driver basically collect this policy from our agent and interact, uh, you know, drive our agent in, in the environment that we just created. And while driving our agent in this environment, it, it creates these trajectories. And these trajectories are ultimately passed to the observer, and it's up to the observer to do what next with this uh, trajectory. In this case, what we are doing is that we are collecting policy from our agent in our training environment, and we are passing the past interaction in the form of trajectory to these two observer. One is a replay buffer observer that we just created that will add all this past trajectory to our replay buffer memory. And another, another is train metrics. And we know that train metric is the evaluation criteria or a function, we can also pass them as a observer. So basically by observing this past trajectory, it's doing two things. One is it's adding all this past trajectory to our memory and another is evaluating the performance of our agent. And after that, we can signify how many steps to take in while you know driving the agent in this environment. So this is the full picture of our uh, TF agent uh, training, you know, components. What we have done so far is that we have created our agent. We have created a deep, deep Q network that will give our agent a policy. And we can use this policy to drive the agent in our environment and collect our trajectory, which in turn will be stored in this replay buffer memory. And using this replay buffer memory, we can again train our agent to come up with a better policy. 
So this is the whole loop of TFAs and training uh, going on here. And uh, you might have noticed that while creating the first, while running the first iteration of our training uh, for our agent, this replay buffer will be basically empty. So there will be no interaction first. So whenever we first initialize our replay buffer, it's basically empty. And whenever we begin our training in the first iteration, this replay buffer will be empty and there will be nothing our agent to train on from, you know. So to avoid this trap, to avoid this problem, what we can do is that we basically create a random agent that will take certain random action in our environment. And all this random action which ra uh, gives random reward and uh, state changes, and they are all form of this trajectory. And we can basically you know, run our random agent in this environment for a few steps, and that will help us collect certain value for our replay buffer memory. And using this random step as initial point, we can begin our training process. So if we don't do that, the replay buffer memory will basically be empty. So there will be nothing to train our agent uh, from. So to, to avoid that, we can do is what we can do is that we, we can create a random policy, a random agent that will take random action, and all and we can fill certain uh, you know, we can fill the replay buffer memory with this random action and uh, begin our training process. And to do that, it's very straightforward as well. We can basically call this random TF policy from our TF agent. And we can just pass our time step spec, our action spec, and we can basically call our, we can call the driver to collect uh, initial policy from this uh, random agent, random policy, and basically fill uh, fill our replay buffer memory with let's say 2000 20000 steps so what we are doing here is that we are creating a random policy that would take random action while driving in this environment and we can do that for like in this case i have done it for 20000 steps but you can also increase or decrease the number as you like and with that we we avoid this trap of uh, training our agent from nothing after that, we create our our data set from this replay buffer memory. And you know from this diagram that uh, we call this replay buffer memory, and we basically uh, convert it as a TF data data set, and we pass them in a batch fashion to our agent to train our agent. So to do that, it's very straightforward. We just call our earlier created replay buffer memory, and we just call it as a data set, and pass the batch size, number of steps, and if, if we want to be in a, in a, done in parallel, we can do that as well. So using that, we can basically create our data set. After that, we train our environment, uh, our agent. So basically, this is the whole uh, loop of, uh, of training an agent using TF agent framework. So to train an agent, uh, we can basically call our data set from replay buffer memory and call agent a train and pass this trajectory to our agent to train it. I have uh, removed the actual code to train the agent, which I will show you at the end of this session, because it's, it will be quite big and it will be hard to display on a slide. But we can see that after what I've done here is that I have trained the agent for 150,000 uh, iteration. And after training our agent for 150 iteration, 150,000 iteration, we can observe this kind of uh, behavior from this uh, two metric. So earlier we know we, we are using using two metrics to evaluate our agent. One is average return, another is average episode length. So we can see that the average return metric also increase over the time. We can significantly see that after 60,000 steps, uh, the reward, the average return has increased to this number. So from, you know, general trend, you know, the, you know, the, uh, style of this, uh, the behavior of this graph, we can say that the agent is learning something. So earlier it was just, uh, you know, uh, around zero and it, it was not learning uh, from this uh, past interaction. But we can see that as the you know iteration progresses after 60,000 iteration, it is increasing its return. You know, it's it's uh, we can say that it's learning something. And, uh, and I know that this uh, graph is a very noisy one. It's not an ideal one. But even in this graph, we can see that the 
general trend here. So the trend here is that it says that the agent is learning something and it has managed to learn something over the long iteration of time. And similarly, in average length uh, metric as well, we can see that the value is not too high and not too low. It's not something you know near equal to zero like in this case here, but it has also managed to increase the number of steps and it's not also like too big uh, so that we can see that the agent has learned something over the time in this iteration. And to see how much the agent has learned, we can evaluate our agent as well. And to evaluate and visualize our agent, what I've done here is that I have basically replaced all this 0, 1, uh, 2, and 3 numbers from the respective icons. And I have received the 1D array of our state observation 2 and 2D array by 6 by 6. And by that, we can observe each action by our agent and the state changes as well. In this case, when I run this agent, when I evaluate this agent for one episode, uh, we can see that the it has taken, it takes like the agent takes 14 step and at the end it has managed to collect the reward of 12.6. And we, we can also see that from this diagram that agent has managed to avoid all this uh, robot position and it has also managed to collect quite some, you know, bones and managed to reach this end goal in time. So we can see that we can say that the agent has learned like the basic rules of the game and it has managed to collect as much bone as possible and it has managed to complete the game as well. And the final reward the agent has managed to collect is 12.6. So uh, let me show you some of the code that I have already in the slide so that it will give you better idea what is going on behind the scene. So you can go to this blog post called Train Your Dog Using TF Agent, which is on Medium. So basically, if you go to medium.com slash deep learning journal, or just search for deep learning journals in Medium, you, you will come over my publication. And there you can see this blog post. So if you go to this blog post and go to end of this blog post, you will see a, a GitHub link, and this GitHub link, link will lead you to this notebook where all these codes are available. So this is the exact code that I have used to train uh, the deep, deep reinforcement learning agent. So as you can see here, in this uh, dog logic class, <coughs> game logic class, uh, method, what I have done here is that I have just basically set the next position and if this next position is whether it's out of boundary, if it's uh, if it's out of boundary then I, can, I have returned a response of illegal move. Similarly, if the next position is where the robot is placed, then I have written a response with found robot. And similarly, if if the next person is uh, the person of the bone, I have responded with a uh, bone found bone response. And if 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 else, uh, you know, if it's a valid move, then I have returned with a response of valid move. And similarly, in a dog adventure environment, which is a Py environment that will use to create TF as an environment, in its step method, what I have done is that I have basically mapped the action taken by our agent to the next agent position and pass that to our move dog method of our game logic class. And I have basically collected the response from this move dog method. And if the you know the response is game complete, then I can say that I can terminate the game using time step dot termination and with the final reward of 10, which, which basically means that if if I get the response of game complete, then I know that the agent has managed to reach the end person of the game and I can give the agent of total of maximum of a positive reward of 10. Similarly, if the response is illegal move, then I can also terminate the game with a penalty of minus 0 0.3. And if, if the response is found robot, then I can similarly give another response and so on. And this is the exact code you can see, you can read it later on as well. After that, let's go to the train code as well. 
So here, as you can see, what I have done is that I have trained the agent for 150,000 iteration. And during this iteration, what I have done basically is that I have collected trajectory from my replay buffer, and I have just basically passed this trajectory under this agent train that will basically train our agent uh, using that past trajectory. And I have collected the loss over the time, over the iteration, and I have also collected the different metrics that I have used, that is basically average return metric and average episode length metric. So as you can see in 150 iteration, all this different loss value, return metric, and so on are displayed here. Let me just go down and show you how I have visualized the all the steps of the game. Uh, so as you can see here, what I have done here is that I have basically received the observation from 1D array to, you know, 6 by 6 array. And I have just basically replaced number 1 by icon of a dog, 2 by icon of robot, 3 by icon of uh, bone, and 0 by empty space icon. And I have just run this uh, for one episode. I have just evaluated the agent, the trend agent, uh, for one episode in this eval environment. And as you can see, all the steps take by our agent in all this uh, while completing this one episode and as you can see by the end of this episode uh, it has managed to reach this end goal with final reward of 12.6 now uh, let me continue after that I have also written another blog which is called uh, Train your dog using TF agents to Revenge of Kiko, where I have basically added some new extra functionality to our agent. So here in this case, instead of training our agent in using one player, what I have done is I have added another player in this game, which will mimic the action taken by our dog or which has similar, you know, capability like our main player dog. And it will also help our dog to finish the game as fast as possible. And on top of that, I have also added a few more actions. So earlier, our dog can only move through the space. Now in this blog, I have shown you that uh, the dog can also attack the robot. So whenever the dog takes this horizontal step to the step uh, st to the position where the robots are placed, it, it actually attacks the uh, robot and remove it from the game, and it will collect extra, uh, you, you know, reward while doing so. So using this uh, two-player mechanism and uh, extra action to attack the robot, I have created this another block. And let me show you the final uh, output from this uh, training as well. So while doing so, the agent has also the agent has also managed to, uh, you know, uh, train both of this player and also managed to teach the player to attack the robots and reach the final position of the game. And in this case, it has taken like 18 step and total reward of 19.3. Now, if you want to learn more about uh, deep reinforcement learning, then you can go to tensorflow.org slash agents, where there are videos and documentation uh, more about TF agent. There are excellent videos. I highly recommend you to check them. You can also get this book for hands-on machine learning. And I think in the chapter 16 or 18, you, there is a chapter for reinforcement learning, where you can learn the different frameworks on reinforcement learning, including TF agent as well. Another is a YouTube playlist called Reinforcement Learning Course by DeepMind, where you will learn about a different theory behind reinforcement learning. And if you like to read a book on theory of reinforcement learning, I highly suggest you to uh, get this book, which is also free. And you can also take this specialization in Coursera called Reinforcement Learning Specialization, which is based on this book as well. Uh, with that, uh, thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed the session.